Right, great. So, yes, welcome along to uh, Doncaster Council's virtual insight experience. Uh, what we're going to do this afternoon is, is basically give you an overview uh, of some of the work areas within the organisation and some of the different opportunities that we have. Uh, we are focusing specifically on sort of work experience and volunteering um, opportunities in the organisation. However, it does go wider than that. What we're really trying to do to get across to you this afternoon is the breadth of opportunities that are available within the council. Now, I'm sure, like most people, when we talk about Doncaster Council, you just think of emptying bins, um, and maybe council tax. However, like any large organisations, we, we literally have hundreds of different career pathways available. So you're just going to get a flavour from uh, those areas today. Um, if could you do the next slide, please. So what we're going to hear from today is uh, colleagues in street scene, our regulation enforcement, legal, and also uh, our waste and highways infrastructure. Um, so we'll just get you warmed up. So as I say, I hope you've done your homework. We're just going to move on to the quiz now. Now, this is just for fun, I'm afraid. Our budget doesn't stretch to any prizes, so you're going to have to mark your own homework. Uh, but hopefully you found this useful. Um, I think it's one of the key skills in a lot of roles within any employer as well is doing your research. So it is going to be a bit of prep as well, particularly when you're dealing with employers, doing a bit of research on the website. So all the answers are freely available on our council website. So uh, should we move on to the next, the first question, please? So, when was Doncaster Council founded? So I'll just give you a few seconds to have a think about that. And the answer is 1974. So I hope you got that one. Next question, when did, you, when did Doncaster host the Tour de Yorkshire? Seems a while ago, it seems a lifetime ago, to be honest, but uh, and when was that? Yep, 2016. Now then, what does a food hygiene rating of five mean? Now, you may have seen these in some of the local restaurants and takeaways and hospitality uh, businesses. So five rating of five means very good. So that's what we're looking for for all of our, uh, our businesses in Doncaster. Next question, please. So what are the fines for fly tipping? OK, and the answers are. So a £50,000 fine and or up to three years in prison if you're convicted in a, in a magistrate's court or an unlimited fine and or up to five years in prison if convicted in a criminal uh, crown court. Sorry, it's a hefty punishments for, for fly tipping. Next question, who won the Doncaster Gritting World Cup? And I'm sure you're all heavily involved in this when it was going out on uh, social media. And the winner was it was it well, I get, have to read this one make sure i get it right gritsy bitsy teeny weeny yellow anti-slip machinery and david plowy now i had my money on mr plow he's my favorite but uh yeah they're the winners there next question how many bridges are doncaster responsible for and you get a you get a bonus point spot on um but otherwise within five plus or minus and the answer is 615 bridges across the borough. Uh, next. So when does street scene carry out hedge cutting operations and why? And the answer is, so the council undertakes hedge cutting on, a, on its amenity hedges between September and March, um, unless requested where a hedge is seen to pose a health and safety risk. And as it described here, this is obviously to protect nesting birds, uh, during the nesting season, which run, runs from March to uh, August. So we're moving into that now, especially with the, the, the weather getting better and days getting longer. So what is the purpose of yellow rattle? That's your next question. And the answer is, it's used to improve grassland back to meadow by feeding off vigorous grasses. It eventually allows more delicate traditional species to push their way through. It's also a food plant for the larvae of two rare moths, including the grass, rib, grass ribulet. So I'm sure you all got that one. Uh, next one, please. So to get moving into legal now, um, what decision did 11 members of the Supreme Court decide was on decide what unlawful led by the now I'm going to restart that again. I do apologise. What decision did 11 members of the Supreme 
court decide was unlawful, led by the now retired Lady Hale. So hopefully you heard that and so the question. Uh, the answer is. So that was Boris Johnson's advice to the Queen that Parliament should be prorogued for five weeks at the height of the Brexit at the height of the Brexit uh, crisis was unlawful. OK, and that seems a long time ago, Brexit, doesn't it? Uh, what number question 10, the final question is, what was the brooch that she wore? Let's see how observant you are, observational skills. And the answer is a spider. So hopefully you've enjoyed that. As I say, you've uh, you've all done really well with your answers. I obviously got 10 out of 10 when I did it without cheating. Um, and again, a lot of that is obviously it's a bit of fun, but again, it's just trying to give you some sort of do some research skills as well on, on the council. So next slide, please. So what we're going to do now is move uh, on to our hearing presentations from our um, colleagues from across the organisation. Uh, they're going to talk for five minutes. Like I said, if you've got any questions at all, please do use the, the chat function. Uh, pop them up there. Due to time constraints, though, we, we will pick them up in the, the Q&A session, if that's OK. So we're going to start off. We're going to hear from Street Scene. We're going to hear from David Ridge. If you're ready, David. Hello, everybody. Bear with me uh, while I share my screen. Can you can you see that everybody? Yes, we can see that. Yeah. OK, so um, thank you for that. Thank you for the introduction and um, thank you everybody who joined us today. So uh, as Alex said, my name is David Ridge and I'm the head of service for street scene uh, services across Doncaster Council. Um, I've literally got five minutes, so this will be a very quick whistle stop tour of uh, of what we uh, what we do within the service. So we'll start off um, with street cleansing. So basically, uh, Doncaster, if you don't know this, and it would probably would have been a good uh, quiz question that Doncaster is the largest geographical metropolitan borough uh, council. Uh, uh, in the in 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 England, um, so as you can imagine, we've got lots of roads and we have lots of um, paths and parks and open spaces that we have to attempt uh, to keep clean and tidy. Um, and in order to do that, we uh, we have a variety of uh, pieces of equipment and machinery. Uh, ranging from large uh, 15 ton mecha uh, mechanical sweepers through to some of the smaller mechanical sweepers that you see, uh, it, it, you're probably seeing when you've been out shopping in the town centre. And of course, uh, down to uh, the, the manual type work, such as emptying litter bins um, and keeping other areas clean, clean and tidy. We're also, as a service, responsible for um, clearing graffiti uh, from areas across the borough, uh, all sorts of graffiti. Unfortunately, um, not all of it is is is, quali is classed as artwork or, or is welcomed, uh, particularly by the people who own the properties, etc., including obviously the council. So we do a lot of work around uh, graffiti and we uh, we are bound as a local authority by um, a code of practice um, which sets a certain standards for keeping Doncaster clean and, and tidy. We also um, have a responsibility for uh, removing fly tipping across Doncaster and we have specific fly, fly tip teams uh, for doing that. Now, un unfortunately, um, fly tip has, has increased, uh, particularly in recent years, um, for, for many different reasons really, but uh, my teams are tasked with removing fly tipping where possible within a seven day uh, uh, time scale. And um, unfortunately, uh, the scale of fly tipping can uh, it can be anything from a couple of bags through to tons and tons and tons of waste. And it cops it 
as you can imagine, it costs an absolute fortune um, for the council to actually clear, clear that up. And again, you can see there we have various types of machinery and equipment that our, our staff are trained uh, and experienced to use from what we call IAB machines, which you see is the bottom left picture uh, with like a, a crane lift on the back through to our um, refuse collection vehicles, which uh, compress the waste uh, uh, in order for us to, to, to be able to create more, create more capacity to be able to, uh, to remove it. We also, uh, as a service, look after uh, grass areas, uh, parks and open spaces. Uh, we have many, many uh, thousands of square metres that we have to keep cut uh, and tidy and looked after. Um, we also um, main, maintain uh, all the shrub bears and, and all the flower beds that you see uh, in the municipal areas across Doncaster. And I'm proud to say that um, we've also got five parks that meet what they call the green flag uh, standard of maintenance, which basically is, you know, it's, I suppose it's a bit like winning an Oscar uh, in the movies. You know, it's high standards of parks and open spaces, and we have five of those. Uh, at the moment, and we're looking uh, to try and get uh, many, many more. One of the, um, I suppose, most difficult and probably one of the biggest risk uh, risk type jobs uh, that we do is uh, we maintain all the trees across Doncaster that fall on council land. Um, that's upwards of a million trees, believe it or not. Um, and um, we we have a system where we have to check those trees on a on a fairly regular basis to ensure that they are safe. Um, just a few weeks ago, I'm sure you were all aware and in some way uh, affected, but I hope only in a, sl in a small way um, by the uh, the the storms. Uh, that w the name storms that came along <laughs> uh, in very quick fashion. And as a consequence of that, Doncaster Council alone had 125 emergency tree jobs that we had to deal with, trees that had fallen into properties, onto roads, um, even on cars in some in some cases, and we had to make those safe and obviously clear those to keep the, the roadways uh, in Doncaster open and, of course, properties um, uh, safe. So, uh, as you can see there, uh, the, the, you have to be particularly fit uh, for the role, there's, there's, tree, there's a lot of tree climbing work that takes place. We have a lot of machinery, uh, specialised expertise machinery that we use to maintain those uh, million trees. And of course, where we remove trees and prune trees, we also replace trees as well. And at the moment, we're trying to support the mayor's uh, pledge to plant a million trees in the next 10 years. Um, some of you will have at no, uh, some time no doubt used some of our multi-use games areas or play areas or BMX tracks. Uh, again, you can see there that uh, the service of street scene staff maintain those areas, they inspect those play areas, uh, we, we put newer play equipment in, uh, etc. Uh, and we, we generally make sure that when uh, young people are using them that they are fit for purpose and they are safe. And last but not least, um, weed control. Um, as you can see there, uh, as I mentioned at the beginning, Doncaster being the largest metropolitan borough um, has got a lot of areas where weeds can grow uh, and particularly in, in growing periods in summers where you get quite a bit of rain and then a bit of sun, it's a real challenge and we have to use specialist equipment. As you can see there, we, um, we've got a number of uh, quad vehicles that we use across Doncaster where we apply uh, what we call herbicide. Uh, it's a safe herbicide um, and obviously that controls the weeds uh, by touching the weeds and uh, the chemical goes down into the weed system and kills, kills them off at the root. Um, it, it's fun, um, I have to say, the, the guys that use these things quite enjoy it, but it's also a very serious operation as well uh, because they're operating on, on roads uh high speed roads etc and near areas where, where there is risk to them so that is um that is the that is the street scene uh a quick a quick whistle stop tour of street scene guys as i say there's 
uh, so much more uh, that's involved, uh, a lot of skilled operations, and there are lots of opportunities for uh, young people to come and volunteer, um, to get involved and to have a go uh, with with some of our equipment. We have we have things like uh, remote control marking uh, machines that basically uh, mark out football pitches, etc. themselves. Um, and also we have uh, mowing machines uh, that are uh, operated uh, through re by remote control and you don't need staff to operate them. So lots going on, uh, but it's it's a really interesting service. Nothing is the same uh, every day. And if you, you know, if you're ever interested in a career in horticulture or arboriculture uh, or cleanse it, the cleansing side of things, then street scene is, is, is something you might want to uh, look at going forward. Thank you, everybody. Excellent, David. Thanks ever so much for that. Really good. Really uh, fascinating as well to see the breadth of areas you're working. I've certainly got a load of questions for you, but I'll save you that save those for you uh, afterwards if that's OK. OK, it's fine. Yeah. Great. So what we're going to do now is now going to move on to uh, Nazir from our uh, enforcement team. Ah, uh, yeah, over to you. Hello. Um, OK, let me just bring this up. Can you see that OK? Yes, yeah, we can. OK, hi everyone. Uh, my name is Nasser Dad. I'm Head of Service for Regulation and Enforcement. Um, as I've just shared on the screen, hang on. Yeah, so Regulation and Enforcement, we've got five main areas. We've got Environmental Health and Enforcement, Resilience and Emergency Planning, Food Safety, Animal Health and Health and Safety, Licensing and Trading Standards, and I'll talk a bit more about each one now. So, um, you can see that, can't you? The slide changing. Um, so environmental health and enforcement is pollution control. That's your fires, your permitted processes, your foundries, your petrol stations all need to comply either with environmental protection legislation or the Clean Air Act. And that looks after that. Housing enforcement, we've got a large stock of private rented properties in Doncaster. Um, we often get involved in, in some might be simple disputes between the landlord and the tenant, but we often get also have issues where the property is in a state of disrepair. Our officers, qualified environmental health officer, housing officers go out, do the inspection and bring about compliance so people have got safe and healthy homes to live in. Planning enforcement is another key area, so anywhere where there's any, any illegal development, um, colleagues will go out and make sure it complies with the Town and Country Planning Act or if a site has got planning permission, they aren't doing any, anything contrary to the permission they have. Parking enforcement, um, key bit of the work we do, particularly ensures um, highway safety. Um, and, and you'll have seen our colleagues walking around the town centre or other areas in the borough where we've got parking issues. Waste and fly tipping, Dave, uh, talk, David even talked earlier about the work his team do clearing it. Um, my teams go out and try to identify who's responsible. So if you looked at our Facebook or Twitter page, we use covert cameras. Um, to identify people responsible in some areas, but also we, we go through waste I said with a fine tooth comb, but within in detail so we can look to identify who's responsible and where we do identify those people. We do issue fines, we do take them to court, and we do prosecute people. Planning advice and guidance. So I talked earlier about the planning enforcement work that we do. One key area that the environmental health team deal with is um, when a new development is going to happen or um, we're looking at significant changes. We get involved early, so particularly around noise and contaminated land. Um, we one we want to stop contaminated land affecting future residents, and secondly, around noise, we don't. If they are building a residential development next to a, a an existing factory, we don't want to be affected by the other. Um, environmental permitting. So if you'll see most petrol stations in environmental permit, if sites got a waste oil burner, you'll need an environmental permit. And similarly, if um, there's a foundry, um, we inspect those. That duty is split between us and the environment agency, but typically colleagues in my my bit of the world go out and inspect them to make sure they aren't adding to air pollution and linked to that we've got air quality monitoring you'll have seen in the news so it's it's always a um, a, a topic of regular discussion around the air quality that we've got and the general in, um, um, air quality environment and the added pollution my team does the monitoring we submit reports of DEFRA and we also have detailed plans about sites that give us concern and how we're going to monitor that moving forward um, the next bit is around res resilience and emergency planning um, We've split this into peacetime and emergencies, really. So when things are are OK, we assess risks, we monitor weather alerts, large scale event support, business continuity, training and exercises. So that's around we're prepared for some, when something 
invariably goes wrong. And I know David touched on the storms we had when we had the flooding. Um, my teams were working closely with, with Lee's team and he's going to speak later around our response to flooding and preparation. And we have officers go out. You might have seen a couple of weeks ago, we had the fire in Bowlby Car and a scrap metal site. We had our forward liaison officers go out and that was being coordinated by the emergency planning officer. And we work closely with the fire service and the blue light services to make sure we've got plans in place and where something does go wrong, we can react collectively and, and safeguard um, life and, and environment. The next bit is around food, animal health, health and safety, private water supplies and animal licensing. A bit of a mouthful, but food safety inspections, I think about the quiz earlier we talked about um, five rated premises and what that meant. Uh, we are we have a legal requirement to inspect all food businesses periodically. So it's about going out and making sure there's no food safety concerns in where they are. We take graduated um, approach to securing compliance. Sometimes we have to close premises down if they've got rats or mice running around or cockroaches, but that, that happens more often than you would think. Uh, private water supplies, it's a unique one that really, um, that supply, so most of us go to uh, have, have mains water come in and courtesy of Yorkshire water. Some properties in the borough don't, they've either on a well or a spring and we've got to make sure that that's safe and there's no mainly bacteriological contamination affecting them. Um, health and safety, so that's the checks at retail, leisure, businesses and that falls to us. Food safety checks, I mentioned earlier about the inspections that we do, but we've also got an iPort and an airport, so we had food, we have food coming in. The image here is just colleagues looking at a pallet that's coming um, on a flight and we've got to make sure before he enters the UK food chain, it's safe. Um, animal breeders um, and shops, so pet shops are licensed. Those breeding animals are also licensed and we do those inspections and licenses and similarly animal welfare complaints. So if a farm, we get reports of farmers not treating their animals right or individuals um, who are breeding don't treat their animals right, we go out, we inspect and we, we take enforcement action. Um, moving on then to licensing, um, this is split really between premises and taxi and by taxi I mean, well you know what taxi and acne carriages are, we make sure the drivers are are fit and, and uh, competent to drive so they, they undergo um, background checks to make sure they've not done anything illegal before they become drivers. Um, we make sure their vehicles, we don't know that personally, but we work with colleagues that are, are roadworthy and safe. So most taxis will have to go, a typically MOT happens once a year. Um, for taxis, the frequencies well, could be as little as four months, but normally six months. Um, so we make, we make sure that's safe. And where we get complaints about taxi drivers, we follow that up. And the other bit of licensing is around premises that serve alcohol. There's the licensing regime is fairly detailed about what we have to ensure happens and fundamentally fundamentally it's about keeping people safe having safe environments and we work with the trade we issue licenses and a big part of work that we've done recently and you've probably seen this if you've been out and about in town is is more businesses using the outdoor space and that that's all fresco licensing that also sits with us um the last bit that sits in in regulation enforcement is trading standards it's it's not a popular area, but it's critical in terms of making sure that what businesses sell is safe. Um, we give advice and guidance to individuals who may have fallen victim to some sort of fraud. Uh, if builders aren't doing the work that they should be doing and we get a number of complaints, we follow that up and take enforcement action. Uh, we generally advise businesses that are making claims that they shouldn't be. So food manufacturers, I think it's going to cure something. We challenge that in terms of labelling and TS work. And another area of work where we've done a lot of activity recently is around illegal tobacco. Um, where it's it's non-duty paid or mainly it's been manufactured somewhere where it shouldn't have been and it's unsafe, not that tobacco is safe in the first place. Bit of a public health message there. Um, counterfeit alcohol, again, anything that's um, slightly illegal is going to generate an income and we do a lot of work around that. And, and more recently, probably in the last couple of years around vapes, um, one, to make sure they are safe and secondly, to make sure just like tobacco and alcohol, they aren't being sold to anybody who's, who's underage. And that is regulation and enforcement for you in, in five minutes. Excellent. Thanks very much for that one, Azir. Again, I've got lots of questions for you later on. So we're now going to move over to Helen Potts in our legal team. You ready, Helen? Yes, thank you. Hello, I'm Helen Potts. I'm a, a solicitor and I'm a principal legal officer uh, with 
and I'm, my role is to manage the, the litigation team. The council's legal team provides services to the council and its partners. So to St Ledger Homes, who look after our council housing stock and also to some schools. We are an in-house team, so we all work for the council and there are approximately 25 lawyers within uh, within the service. They are split into three teams. Uh, the fourth team, the childcare team, is, is with the Children's Trust, so it's separate to the council. But there are three teams within the council which are contracts and commercial, and they advise on uh, drafting of contracts for the various different areas within the council, such as uh, healthcare, adults' health, ICT, children's, and construction. So they do all the drafting for those teams, and also they advise on public procurement regulations, which, because we're uh, a public body, it's how we purchase our goods on our services. And uh, we also, they also need assistance at times on other areas so they can pull in assistance from data protection and employment when drafting their contracts. So the second team that we have is the property team, which carries out a wide uh, variety of work. So they purchase houses, they sell land, they draft commercial leases and licenses. Uh, they also deal with right to buys where tenants are allowed to buy their council property and they deal with highways, highways work so they do stopping orders, no parking orders and temporary restrictions for road works. Uh, at times you'll see that roads are closed and that has to go through a proper process. And then they also deal with tree preservation orders so uh, we protect trees from being cut down that need to be preserved. And thirdly, the litigation team, which I manage, and this includes a, a wide variety of work, including, uh, as you'd expect, appearing in court. We prosecute in the magistrate's court. You've already heard from Nazia about some of the work that's done by Trading Standards and the Enviro teams and the evidence they collect. They put their files together that we then put into court to for them to prosecute for that. And uh, that starts off in the Magistrates Court and it can go, go to the Crown Court if it's a serious enough offence. We also uh, deal with the civil courts. So we uh, bring and defend matters in the county court. For example, uh, repossessing uh, council houses if rent has not been paid or there's been antisocial behaviour. Uh, we also start uh, legal proceedings for debt recovery to recover sums due from the council. And we also uh, defend matters if someone decides to bring uh, action against us. We also give advice on planning matters. We have two specialist planning lawyers in the team. We have an employment lawyer who uh, gives advice generally uh, to human resources on employment matters, but also will defend claims brought against us in the employment tribunal. We also have a lawyer who deals with adult safeguarding and care, including uh, appearing in the Court of Protection and then we give ad education advice and we clerk the independent panels for school admission appeals if uh, a parent or child hasn't got into the school they want and wants to appeal and we also deal with permanent, permanent exclusion reviews for some schools and we also appear in the special educational needs tribunal so there's a lot a large variety of work that goes on within the council. Uh, we have qualified solicitors and barristers as part of the team. We also have legal officers who have law degrees and those who are working up to, uh, to their exams to become legal executives. And we have in the past had an apprentice, 
apprentice who has st stayed with us and is hoping to comment, uh, proceed through the, the legal team uh, when she's got further qualifications. And we do have two trainee solicitors at the moment. They've done their law degree and they did the legal practice course before joining us. And I know the legal practice course is going to be uh, changed at soon at this time into the solicitors qualifying exam, but we will still have trainee solicitors within the team. So the good things about working for the council for lawyers is that we build up good relationships with clients and also we're a, a good, there's a good teamwork uh, ethos within uh, legal. We work well together and there is such a variety of work. No day is the same and at any moment you can suddenly be divided onto to other work. So it's certainly interesting. And uh, the work-life balance is also uh, is very good. So uh, COVID has changed a lot of things. We are working at home a lot more now. We still need to go in when there is court, but uh, we are finding ourselves at home a lot more. We do try and get into the office and now things seem to be getting better. We will be in the office more. I have uh, Adam with me, who is one of our legal officers who's only recently joined us. Uh, so I'm just going to ask Adam two quick questions. I'm not sure if my five minutes is up yet, but Adam, you're a legal officer uh, working on housing matters uh, for our council homes team for St Ledger and also you're doing some debt recovery. Can you briefly explain your academic background, how you got to be working with us? <laughs> um, yes, yeah, so obviously I sort of went through school, went to sixth form and did my A-levels. Um, and then from there I went to Nottingham Trent University and did my undergrad degree in law. So that was three years. Came out of there, went around different places, getting various experience working. Um, and then did ended up working at another local council before starting here. Um, in January, and then I am hopefully looking to progress with my further qualifications now, looking to qualify. And that's qualify as a solicitor, yeah. ultimately. And mm -hmm. um, yeah. I know you haven't been here for long, and I'm putting you on the spot, but what do you enjoy about working here and working for a council? You've had previous, previous experience in a council. So I think it's mainly the things that you sort of already covered. There is a good work-life balance compared to, I think, some places, especially with if you're working in legal firms and you're working for the council. Um, if you're working for council, you seem to have a bit more of a work-life balance than if you're in a specific firm of solicitors, as well as the things you've mentioned. It's quite flexible with the flexible working and as well as the working from home. Um, and then like the variation of what we do as well. So like say you've gone through all the different things there that we've that the council legal team and litigation team provide. So it's just never the same when you're working. That's great. Thank you. And you go to court quite regularly. You're over in Sheffield, aren't you? And then you're here at Doncaster. Yeah, so yeah, I'm in court probably once once or twice a week, um, either here at Doncaster or over in Sheffield. So yeah, like I say, like it always it easy easy to break the week up by going out and doing things like that as well. That's great. Thank you, Adam. No that, problem. Thank you. <laughs> that concludes our presentation from Legal, Alex. <laughs> Excellent. Thanks, Alan. And uh, thanks, Adam, for that. Very interesting. Right. We're now going to move on to Lee, who's going to talk about his area. Yeah. Good afternoon, everyone. Uh, my name's Lee Garrett, as Alex has just introduced me there. I'm Head of Service for Highways and Waste Services at Doncaster. Just bear with me one second while I get the screen up. Has that come up? Has that come up fine? Yes, we can see that, Lee. Lovely, thank you. Okay, yep, so I'm Lee, I had a service to just say. Uh, just a bit of background to me so people can see how the council can uh, give you a career if you like. I know one or two people have mentioned that already. I've been at the council 38 years, uh, started realistically at the lower lower end of the, of, the, of the services and I've worked my way up. So there are opportunities and why I mention that particularly now, because uh, the services I'm going to go on to describe in a moment, the six specific areas I will describe, we're basically recruiting heavily because 
we have got an awful lot of additional funding in front of us for the next few years and so there are opportunities and what the council will do and too, particularly what my services can do or the services I manage should I say we can offer training which is obviously what people need when they start out their career so that's just a few of the headlines from from where we're at the service is uh, 222 staff in total um, we have a budget of 30 million pounds annual budget that is for revenue that's day-to-day -day expenditure and uh, that's like keeping things running if you like um, and then 15 million pounds a year of capital so that's to build the new items whatever they might be so that's literally building new stuff across the borough and all of the services generate per year four million pounds of income so you can see we're a very big spender in terms of the economy but we also generate that income as well which helps to um, offset some of the costs of some of the other services across the council. So the first area is waste and recycling. Um, and I'm pretty sure everybody knows what this one does. There's the vehicles on the left, the RCVs, refuse collection vehicles. Um, and this contract is actually, it's an external contract. So it's not council staff doing this particular service. It's a company called Suez, which will potentially become Veolia in the next six months to a year as there's a merger going, going through. Um, and that collection contract is a big single biggest control council contract that we run. It's 90 million pounds over 10 years. And as Helen's just been talking earlier on about working across this, the services, we work with Helen's legal team in doing that kind of contract and ensuring that that is procured legally, etc. Um, they make 14 million collections a year. So that's that's quite a number per, per, per month, over a million uh, per month. Um, and that, that that does for all of your collections. So that's your, your black, your blue and your green bins. So your residual, your recycling and your green waste that we do collect. Um, the, the, the building on the right there is, is a peer fire finance, private financial private finance initiative project and it takes all of the black bin waste from Barnsley, Doncaster and Rotherham and it's situated in Rotherham and all what comes out the back end of that less than three percent actually goes off to landfill it's around about one and a half to two percent generally but on average it never goes above three percent the rest of it is either recycled around about 45 percent or it um, then goes off as recovered as energy from waste and is burnt at a new facility at Ferry Bridge, just on the A1, which is the old Ferry Bridge power, power station. Um, what this other team does in terms of waste and recycling, they run the household re waste recycling centres across the borough. We've got six of those and they're open seven days a week. Um, and we do education um, into schools on how to deal with waste and prevent waste uh, as much as possible. Next area is network management, highway network management. Um, a smallish team, 20 odd 30 people. And um, their one of their primary roles is to record um, what we actually maintain and manage. Now you heard Dave mention earlier on about the, the, the miles of road that we actually maintain. Well, it's a thousand miles of road, but also 300 miles of public rights of way. So that's the paths across fields that we all walk on uh, for exercise or, or, or whatever it might be for just enjoyment um, but we need to keep records of those so as, as things are built or, or amended we keep all of that records to make sure we're dealing with the, the equipment and assets that we actually own as an authority um, the team also does the road closures um, so once again Helen mentioned there so what my team in terms of here also work with legal on terms of road closures so that were things for like events sports events football you name it um parades all sorts of things that that, that require a road closure we'll work with a legal team on that and setting those up and work with the people who actually require the event and the picture on the right there is actually a large movement so that's actually a generator for one of the power stations. And you see that we have to close roads and allow that to go through the borough. So they've actually got a license to do that to move through the borough. So they manage that as well for us. How is asset maintenance? Um, this is the, the maintenance team, um, as it says on the tin there. Um, and they look after that 1,000 miles of road, um, which is split into the, uh, the, the main roads, the A, Bs and Cs, the classified roads. And, and the remainder, which are the estate roads. The A, Bs and Cs are in good condition. 
we have the funding to be able to deal with that and manage those exceptionally well. In fact, the A roads are top quartile in nationally in the country, so stand up to all sorts of scrutiny on that. Um, but one of the teams that, that are in there are the inspectors. So the inspectors will go around and look at every single road and footpath at least once a year, some of them 12 times a year. And those inspection processes are absolutely vital to the organisation. Uh, currently, the, those processes save us at least a million pounds a year in claims. Had we not got those processes, I have a high instant to think what the actual cost might be against the authority. And we have a further team then that does the condition of the roads. So not, not just inspecting them, but what's the condition? How much life is left in the road? When are we going to repair it? What are we going to repair it with? Um, what materials are we going to use? When are we going to do it in terms of the time frames and all of that? And making sure we extract as much life out of those assets as possible. Uh, and that picture there in the middle there, that's what we call a scrim machine. And that you can see a wheel just in the middle. And that made it a little bit difficult, but there's a wheel in the middle there. That is actually measuring the skiddiness of the road. And obviously those roads that are skiddy, then we have to go in and, and intervene and do something we might need to do. Uh, and finally, there, there's a bridge that's been worked on. We, the bridges I mentioned we got in the quiz earlier on, 615 bridges. Um, they might be worth keeping an eye out as well. The those people that know Mexpra, what we call a uh, dual carriageway across Mexpra, there's a flyover there. That's got beyond its, its design life and it's now beyond economical repair. We will be demolishing that in the next month or two. So quite an interesting project. Um, and it, well, I'm sure it will make at least local news, if not national news. Next team is the drainage and street works team. Um, Nazir mentioned earlier on the floods that we suffered from uh, two or three weeks ago. Well, in terms of Doncaster, a third of the borough, <coughs> excuse me, a third of the borough actually sits in floodplain. So in essence, a third of the houses in Doncaster could flood at some time due to river overtopping or climate change or a mixture of both. Since we've got quite a big team in terms of the flood risk and we work with them, our emergency planning colleagues, as Nazia said, in terms of dealing with that. So they deal with incidents at the time, obviously, but then the planning in terms of flood mitigation schemes. Um, as a result of what with the floods we had in 2019, we've got more than likely in the region of 30 million pounds ahead of us in this next five to 10 years to deliver schemes that will prevent or help mitigate houses to, from flooding um, in the future. Uh, also, in part of that team is the drainage team, and that's more of your day-to-day -day maintenance in terms of looking at the, the, the highway gullies, the pipe works, the drainage, and keeping all of those clear, and the ditches and, and, and screens clear that, that protect those ditches. Um, one of the teams that sits in here is street works. So street works is actually dealing with the utilities gas, water, electric, etc. Now, including the council themselves, the road is dug up around about 13,000 times a year um, from a small little hole uh, like the one that you can see in the picture there to major, major works. So that, that's probably uh, some form of waterworks there, I think that one. Um, but then we might have the major works such as we installed or an, and the pipe was installed all the way from Rotherham supplying new electricity supply from Rotherham all the way into Doncaster Town Centre in just one project. So that's the kind of level of, of disparate schemes they have in there. Safer roads, um, very much as it says on the tin, um, they manage the roads in terms of road safety. So they'll do measures that improve the road safety in terms of traffic management layouts like that plan in the middle there. They'll do cycle facilities, traffic signals, crossings for pedestrians, um, um, training education with schools. We do an awful lot of that on, on, all throughout the year. Um, and, and just making sure that wherever we can improve road safety, we do. Uh, and the, the impacts of what that team has done, we now are seeing the lowest casualty record uh, at 50 percent of what it what it was 15 years ago that's the lowest on record and um, so i'm really pleased with the, the performance of that team and my final team are highways operations so these are the teams that are actually going and getting their hands dirty these are the people that are out on the roads working from our depot which is the bottom right hand corner there with the salt barn out at north bridge there are 100 people 
and they're out literally building whatever we need in terms of construction and maintaining so they'll do things for all the way from street lighting to drainage to to mini mini repairs to potholes to full resurfacings and running a winter service as you can see the greater going over north bridge there um, and they'll have an annual turnover around about 30 million pounds so once again it, it's a big business on its own um, and they are literally recruiting 20 people as we speak so that there are lots of opportunities in that team in particular for any of those services that are actually out on the ground constructing civil engineering works and a final mention for a team that are interwoven across all of the services is a professional business support so in terms of Nazir's area and Dave Bridges area that we talked about earlier on we have the professional business support team who historically would have been called admin but they provide the back office support to keep all of our frontline services running and operating as smoothly as possible and that's it from me thank you Great, thanks so much for that, Lee. Right, uh, yeah, so you've just heard from colleagues, which uh, I think, well, you'll agree. I mean, I, I've worked at the council for a number of years too, but still amazed at the, the breadth of areas that we actually get involved in uh, within the organisation. I mean, the council really is at the heart of uh, making Doncaster better. So whether that's where you're living, um, you're working, you're learning, you're shopping, socialising. Um, and all obviously these teams are just part of that uh, council's response to those developing those areas. We've now got time for some questions. If uh, if anyone's got anything they'd like to ask in the champ function, any burning questions for our managers? As I say, I've certainly got a couple that I'd, uh, I'd like to ask. Shall I kick off then? Um, so just with yourself, Lee, just because you're you you saw a camera. Um, what is it that you look for from a from an employee? We look at obviously sort of the qualification side, but from a softer skills, are there any sort of skill sets that you look from from individuals? The attitude, enthusiasm. Yeah. Uh, firstly, is enthusiasm because whatever whatever ro role of uh, experience in life you're going to enter, you've got to be enthusiastic to 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 want to to want to exceed and get the most out of it. Um, but we are a public facing organisation, so absolutely so. That what goes with that enthusiasm is ability to listen and talk to people. We're a big organisation, you've only seen a fraction of what we've got here. It's the ability to, to listen, to be engaged, uh, and want to learn. They're, they're the key areas from the special people that we've started in the beginning of their employment. Excellent. And and well, you can ask yourself, Lee, or colleagues might want to pick this up as well. With regards to opportunities, at what level are they? So are they across the board? So you do, say, work experience, volunteering opportunities, apprenticeships. I know it's been touched on earlier on. Is there qualified jobs sort of up to management? Yep. So at the, at the moment, we, we've, we're we doing a range of recruitment. We're actually recruiting 33 new posts within, and I think I mentioned 220 in the service at the moment. So we're we'll adding another 33 to that. And that's ranging from all the way from 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 the the lowest uh, in terms of the, the frontline service in terms of deliveries down there five into grade five and six as we call it, all the way up to management kind of grades, which is sort of by comparison you start at five and six, and you end up at nines and tens that kind of range. There they become more the technical, and obviously you'd expect the people to come in with managerial experience. But a lot allied to that, absolutely. Then any work experience across any of these teams that anybody is interested. We are quite happy to, to, well, we want to take people on to get experience in, in these fields. Excellent, thank you. Nazir, have you got anything to add? Um, similar to what Lee said, we, we do, we, we recruit across the spectrum. There are some technical specialisms, some qualifications you need to do some of our work in terms of food safety or health and safety. Mm -hmm. um, that it used to be a very traditional route. You finished college, you went to university, and then you, then you, you started working um, once you'd qualified and registered with the with the institute, you'd start working in environmental health. We're not quite there anymore. It's more there are opportunities. You can come in at the ground level, so to speak, and, and work your way up in the organisation. There's more apprenticeships we can take um, advantage of. So it's it's really a case of you might have an idea of where you want to be in the future, but there's there's different pathways. It's no longer rigid. Yeah, or, or strict. So, um, and you might start in one part of the organisation and think that isn't for you anymore. But equally, starting in in one part, getting your foot in the door for one of a better 
better term uh, and then you see what opportunities there are and, and you can you can move up that way so it's it's no longer as prescriptive as it was and just echoing what lee said we do have opportunities for people for, to come for work experience um just just make contact and we can't yeah. accommodate everybody at the same time but we you know we will do our best to accommodate as, as many as we can excellent uh, and we've had a couple of questions just on the process so i will pick those up in a second if that's okay um just just what we've got dave there i don't know if you've got anyone anything specific to ask but I, I think one of the questions i've got it probably covers all of you really but um is the role that we do is about improving doncaster um, about making people, you know, improving their lives, uh, whether that's a person or, or or a business. So uh, you've touched on it as well, but that sort of customer service, you know, and having a vested interest in making Doncaster's lives better. Um, yeah, so I, I, absolutely, uh, Alex. I, I think that the ca council, uh, local authorities have, uh, I think have changed and have evolved, uh, not just Doncaster, but most other authorities in, in recent years. And it's more about, um, the, putting the customer, uh, the resident, if you like, uh, at the centre of the work that, that we all do. And, and that's beyond what we do and, and across the council in the various other services that are not represented here today. And, and, and I think it's very much about that. We call it a person centred approach, but it is about keeping, you know, Lee will keep the roads maintained, he'll keep them safe, you know, uh, make sure people have got uh, the ability to to get about safely, to get to their place of work, to get to schools and that in, in a timely manner, in a safe way. Nazir, you know, that environmental protection side of things, again, making sure that the food that we eat um, is to standard, the fuel that goes into vehicles that parents obviously pay a lot of money for, are the right measures, et cetera. And of course, from a street scene perspective, um, you know, from we, it's 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 absolutely uh, the case that we we try to make Doncaster look, and this is a, this is the same for all three of us, but making Doncaster look the best it can be for inward investment. What I mean by that is all these businesses want to come to Doncaster, want to set up in Doncaster, um, and then that provides jobs for people. You know, and the better the business, the better the standard of uh, of Doncaster looks. You know, the more salary wages that. Uh, and the better qualifications that people will be able to get and aspire to. Yeah. Yeah, excellent. And, and just touching on yourself, Helen, uh, with uh, with your presentation, um, in regards to the variety of, of the council working for the organisation, no two dames are the same. So what, what skills are you looking for from there? So you're looking for quite flexible people as well with the range of you know what they're going to get, be getting involved in? Yes, there are specific areas. So we have, you know, very specialised planning lawyers, contract lawyers, property lawyers. But it, within that, they're not just churning out the same contract day after day, which some of those who've come from private practice, that that's what they ended up doing. There's a yeah. good variety and yeah, very, uh, as you can see from here, very interesting clients who just make yeah the day enjoyable. Uh, so. We do particularly have a need for, you know, qualified, say, contract lawyers, but also we have the entry level for people to come in who want a, a career in law and uh, can start off and work through training on the job. It's yeah. just when those opportunities are available and it's keeping an eye out on the council's website for yeah. jobs. Yes, yeah, thanks for that, Alan. You've also linked me back now back to this sort of presentation, really. So I know we've had a few questions um, within the chat regarding the process. Um, so what I'd just like to do really is, is just for clarity for those people that we've got on the uh, attending today's presentation, we do have two um, sort of definitions of work experience and uh, volunteering. Now, the council's definition is um, a work experience opportunity is to give somebody um, the an understanding and experience of the work, of being in the workplace setting. Um, now, typically they are aimed at people that are still in education. So um, whether that's uh, mainstream, edu you know, statutory education or further or higher education. Um, we've also have volunteering and this is an opportunity for people that basically want to get a and experience uh, different careers for various reasons. Uh, maybe they're looking at a career change. 
um, retraining or something like that. So that is typically aimed at sort of people that well, aren't in education anymore, basically. So uh, they're the two different um, sort of definitions of work experience and volunteering. Now, within the slide, uh, the presentation, we will send the slides to you as well. Um, there does include a link to the council's website. Now, we are revamping the council's work experience offer. Now, a lot of that is to reflect the current world of work that we're working in now, post COVID, but things do start to return to normal. Um, if you follow the link, uh, but basically go to the council's doncaster.gov.uk, search for work experience. It will explain, explain the process, what opportunities are available, how to apply. Now, whether that's work experience, volunteering, shadowing, uh, anything like that. Um, it'll explain how to do it now as we do try to accommodate all requests that we get in, um, but obviously we can't always fulfill it for, we can't meet everybody's, but at least it will take you through the process. We're also building up a resource on there, which will include the videos from today's presentation uh, as a guide to the different career opportunities. So if you are considering getting into different areas of the council, you'll be able to go on there and have a look. Um, also, we've got details of other support services that we've got and initiatives that are running. For example, we are looking at holding similar events to these in the future um, on different areas within the organisation. So again, just to explain the, the breadth of those um, uh, of, of the different career roles and opportunities in the organisation. Uh, sorry, Laura, next slide please, Laura. I'm conscious of time. Um, now, we're going to send out feedback um, on today's presentation. Uh, we really value your feedback um, so that we can then use that and then obviously take it on board to then obviously look at how we deliver future sessions and events. We want to make sure that the content's right. We're giving you the right information that you're at. So we'd really value if you can take your time to fill this out. Um, you can either do it now whilst you're here, uh, but we will email it out to you as well. So you can send that back to us. Um, and that's saying that'd be really, really, really useful. So we'll, I'm just, I would say conscious time, we have kind of gone over a little bit, so uh, apologies about that. But uh, has, has anyone got any sort of burning questions whilst we've got you all here? Now, just checking the chat function. If not, we will share the uh, work experience email address as well, uh, and also the team's contact details. So please feel free to drop us an email. Uh, if you've got any burning questions, or if you'd like to, I don't know, arrange them, put colleagues on the spot here. I'm sure we'll be happy to have a chat or so on within the team if you've got a specific interest. Um, so all that remains is just to thank you ever so much for your time this afternoon. I uh, hope you found it useful. Um, also, thank you to my colleagues again for taking the time out to deliver those really interesting presentations. Uh, and we look forward to hearing from you all soon. Take care. Bye.